Good morning, North Central. How y'all doing this morning? Okay, all right, yeah. I know you'll probably see outside a little bit and it's dark, but it's nighttime for me, but it's still morning chapel, so let's try it again. Good morning, North Central. And I hope you guys are having a good time at your homes as we're celebrating being home, hallelujah. <laughs> But we're celebrating being safe, right? And so I know for some of us, we're just now trying to get into a groove. Uh, but as we're doing that, I just want us to take a little time to just worship. Just honor God from wherever we are. Even if you still got your pajamas on, if you're still laying across the bed, we just want you to just take some time to worship the Lord. Is that all right? Come on, from wherever you are. That's all right. I know. Just slip a hand up, right? Come on, just worship. Just, just sing a song to the Lord. Come on. Oh, we honor you today. shall strengthen our hearts. Way I, I say on the Lord. So Lord, we're waiting on you. Strengthen us on today. Come on. Move by your power. Move by your strength. Let me say this. Come on. You are my strength. you 
Come on, you say it. Come on, you are. Come on. You are Good morning. Thank you, Ellington, for that wonderful time of worship. So glad you could join me on this Friday for our virtual chapel series. My name is Todd Munger. I'm the Executive Director of Student Development, and I'm super excited to be able to be invited uh, by Dr. Graham to share in this uh, modality. Hopefully, the last time I get to do it in the sense that we never have to find ourselves separated like this again. But I wanted to take a few moments as we just take 10, 15 minutes to share some of the thoughts that that God's been laying on my heart this semester. I didn't really think it would have to do so much with this time, but it's just been something that God is continually bringing back um, to my heart. And so I wanted to share some of these things where I have my whiteboard here. Uh, my hopes is taking some of our, our psychological concepts uh, that I really enjoy and infusing them into the Word of God. And so I want to start by demonstrating something I actually showed to the faculty way back in January January when this was, was brand new. But it's this idea of the difference between pressure and stress. Because a lot of the times when these things are happening to us, around us, I feel a lot of stress all the time. Maybe you're feeling a bit of stress today too. And so I thought, well, let's share this idea and then tie it into our chapel uh, time today. So here it is. If there's something you didn't know, is that pressure in, in physics, now I'm no ma mathematician or physics person, but if we did pressure, there's a, a formula, and the pressure formula is force over area. Now, an interesting thing that I found out is that the formula for stress is also force over area. Pressure and stress, while different quantities, actually have the same formula. And I started saying, Lord, that's a fascinating thing because there's times in my life where I feel a lot of pressure, but I don't actually feel stress. Think about it if you're an athlete. 
There's a lot of really stressful, what I would consider really stressful situations. But it's not a stressful situation, it's a pressure situation called the clutch, right? Or maybe if you think of public speaking, for you, maybe that would be something that's really stressful. For me, I really enjoy it. There's pressure for sure, but I'm not stressed. So what's the difference between pressure and stress? Well, according to Nicholas Petrini's publication, Wake Up, The Surprising Truth About What Drives Stress and How to Build Resilience, he says this, Everyone feels pressure but not everyone feels stress. The difference is when we are stressed, we ruminate on the future or the past and attach negative emotions to the possible outcomes. Let me read that again. The difference is when we are stressed, we ruminate on the future or the past and attach negative emotions or positive or, or pos possible outcomes. People who can function under pressure have the ability to detach from the stimuli while still staying connected. They can find emotional coherence and they can re-engage to produce healthier and more productive outcomes. So what's the difference between pressure and stress? We all feel pressure. Stress is when we add in rumination, this thinking over and over and over again. And I was just praying about this and I said, Lord, this is fun. I like what we call mnemonics, things to help us remember things. And so as I was thinking about it, I thought, you know, when we have a stressful situation, like maybe we have right now, whether you're working from home or whether you're studying or whether you're trying to teach a course online or just the, the anxiety that's around us as a community right now. Sometimes I think stress has a big F and a tiny little A. And that F can stand for things, right? So this, the F, I think, when we're stressed, the F, what might stand for is feelings always trusting our feelings how i feel i feel i feel out of control i i feel disconnected i, I feel left alone i feel left out right these feelings and one of the things we know is that we can't always trust our feelings so that leads to stress the other thing that i i think can lead to stress is the sense of failure what if I fail? What if I fail in class? What if I fail in my job? What if I fail with my friends? What if I fail with my family? This, this kind of impending doom that maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I'm going to miss out on something that will cause me to fail. And I, I ruminate on this, on this failure idea. And then, of course, the one we know as Christians all the time, because this is like the biggest attack of the enemy, is fear. If he can get fear into our lives, that is like... It like paralyzes us, right? And the enemy is constantly trying to drive a wedge of fear between, between who we are and now our relationship with the Lord or our relationship with others. Fear can cripple us. And another F that I put in there is the future, right? At times, we're so focused on what the future may or may not bring that it causes us to be really stressed. We don't know where, where, where this, this COVID-19 thing is going. We don't know where our academics are going. We don't know what this is going to do. How is this going to impact my future? And it, and it begins to cause this rumination that, that goes on and on and on. But it's like the F is, is really, really big. But I'd like to suggest that the Lord would say to us, Hey, you may be under pressure, but keep in mind that the F is very small and the area underneath which God is in control of, that's the bigger part of the fraction. Now I hear this thing, this is just an extra tidbit. This little line here, this is called the vinculum. The vinculum. It's what separates the, the, the numerator from the denominator. In math, not a mathematician, but I thought that was interesting because there are times in our spiritual walk where we've got to flip the script, we've got to flip kind of our thinking. It's like the vinculum. I've preached on this before and I've used Elijah 19 about how when Elijah goes and he says, I've done all these things for you, Lord, and now I'm going to lose my life and he's depressed. And the Lord takes him out on the mountain. The Lord passes by and he hears him in a small whisper. It's, it's this reshaping, it's this vinculum moment in Elijah and he goes back and Elijah says exactly the same thing to the Lord. I have been zealous. I have done the things you've asked for me. I am having my life on the line, but I'm going to do something. It's like the shift. And it's a shift from the force being the biggest to now realizing that God is the God who is in the earthquake. He's in, in, in the, the fire, but really where he is is in the small, still whisper that he is in control. 
and it changes Elijah's tone. So what does the A stand for? I think the first thing the A must stand for is attitude, right? Back in the 80s, there was a guy called Zig Ziglar, and he is a motivational speaker, and I had this term written up on my study area. It was called, it's your attitude, not your aptitude, that's going to affect your altitude. It's your attitude, not your aptitude, not how smart you are, that's going to affect your altitude, how high you go. It's a silly little thing, but I've, I've lived my life by that, about what is my attitude going to be? What's my attitude towards... Uh, towards these circumstances? What's my attitude towards my faith? What's my attitude towards God? What's my attitude towards my family? What's my attitude towards my studies? What's my attitude towards my colleagues, the things that are around? What's my attitude going to be? Positive or negative is going to change your outcomes, right? And then the other, the other thing was assessment was a nice big A word. It's like, am I making an accurate assessment of what is going on in the world around me? Because fear comes in where it's like they find one thing and they blow it out of proportion. We call that catastrophizing. It's like, let's take time to make an accurate assessment that I'm in the Word of God, that I'm really praying about what's going on, asking God to reveal to me the truths of what's happening in the world that seems so out of control, knowing that He is in control. And then the next one, the other one I put in here, was action, right? When, when Elijah was on that mountaintop, And uh, he had this shift, right? He had this change in attitude that God is for him, that he did an accurate assessment, that he has done a lot of things for the Lord. The Lord has been faithful to him. The Lord has protected him. The Lord has done everything he said. Then the Lord gave him an action. He said, go back through the wilderness. Go back from the way you came. What? Go back from the way I just came? That seems crazy. Go back to the place where I could die? But no, he gives him some steps, tells him to anoint Elijah, tells him to anoint Jehu. He gives him this process, right? These action steps. And sometimes when we're under stress, we get paralyzed and we do nothing. But my encouragement for you today would be, what are your action steps that the Lord may be challenging you with today? What are the action steps that you can do, the next best thing that you know how to do, that you can kind of live through this and keep this in a place of pressure? One of the things that I was uh, really thinking about this week is I was just again praying and saying, Lord, I just love this mnemonic, this pressure is force over area. Was well, the Lord said, do you know that when you have a fraction, because I'm doing this with my kids at the moment, it's that if the, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, right? Um, I think I've got those the right way around, right? This is called an improper fraction. Right? This is an improper fraction. It's greater than one, or it's greater than the sum of the, the whole, right? So it's, it's not right. And, and sometimes I thought, you know, this is like when I do this, me over God, or maybe my circumstances over little God, right? That's an improper fraction, because the reality is a proper fraction, right, is me all my circumstances over a big God. That's a proper fraction. Force needs to be smaller than the area. It can be pressure, don't get me wrong, because we're in a lot of pressure. But it doesn't have to be debilitating because our God is a big God. I was so excited last week when we released You Will Be Our God. In fact, I told uh, Jeff Day, I said, this would be like the song of Moses and Miriam when, when... when uh, they got through the Red Sea, and you might remember that. And I just wanted to read a little bit of this song of Miriam, and it says, Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he will become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him, right? They're not letting the force get too big. They're shrinking it down and and singing this song about how awesome, how awesome their God is. In verse 6, it says, Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. They're singing this song. And I was, you know, it's kind of funny, but maybe true. Uh, Sorry, Genesis, because I'm always going to remember you and remember this song because this is the song that was released in COVID. It's like a prom song almost. You know, you go to these, like at your prom, or or you have that moment in time when you're on the radio, right? And you remember this song because I remember when this song was released, 
how our community came together and we sang a song, you will be our God and we will be your children. And I want to end with another scripture that's found in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8. And it says this, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. And then in verse 16 it says, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. That's faith, right? For the things that are seen are transcendent, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Let's pray together as we finish out this time. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to come together as a community in this chapel experience. I thank you that like Paul who wrote letters to the church that was scattered amongst Asia Minor, Lord, you can use technology to bring us together. These letters that are, that are visual that we can see to remind us of your truth and your promises, that you are a God who hears us in our despair, hears us in our affliction, but you do not leave us there. You do not leave us alone and you come after us and you fight for us. For you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are Jehovah Sabaoth, our banner, the Lord of hosts. You are Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Tenisku, Jehovah Rophi, Lord God. You are all of these things, our, our healer, Lord, our righteousness. You are an awesome God. And Lord, I just pray for each member today, whatever they're doing, be it in, in school, as they study as they prepare as they they work on their papers as they do their zoom calls whatever it might be that you would strengthen our students that you would give them hope and that you would give them perseverance and that you'd build their character and lord that you'd help them to know they're not alone and that we stand together and for our staff and faculty as they go about their business lord god may you give them wisdom and insight and innovation and grace and mercy lord god that we can hold together in this time like the Israelites who marched through the wilderness with their God in front of them. A fire by night, a cloud by day. Lord, let your Shekinah glory forever be resting upon us wherever we may be and bring us back together. Keep us safe. Keep us healthy, Lord. And let us be a light upon a hill that a North Central community member is different than anybody else and that we can shine and share your love to this lost generation. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a great weekend, North Central, and we'll see you back here on Monday. <laughs>